How are we? Good, thank you, Molly. How are you? Fucking fantastic, lad. Okay. How's it feel for this one? Big one, big card, Madison Square Garden. What's the emotions like heading into this one? I think every single one of you know exactly how hard I've worked for this moment, for this event. And um, I feel like a kid at Christmas. I've, um, I've said it's like your last Christmas, you believe in Father Christmas, when you wake up on Christmas Day and get to open your presents. I'm just that excited to get in there and experience the the venue, the arena, the fans, the Irish, the English, even the Americans. I just, I'm here for it all. Do you feel like, obviously, you've had a couple of runouts in London recently, you've shown the, the people over here what that atmosphere can be like. Do you anticipate that they'll try and catch up and they'll show you that same sort of reception on Saturday? Yeah, I've got a lot of people coming. Um, and I know a lot of people here as well who are going to come and just bring bring some European vibe to the to MSG. I was here when Katie Taylor fought Amanda Serrano, and if any of you guys was here, th then it was there then. You'll know that the the um, the atmosphere was special, and um, I think it should be the same on Saturday night. So, with that said, right. You're not a stranger to that atmosphere, but at MSG, with the, the, the size of the event, does that put extra pressure on you? Or are you feeling like, this is not extra pressure, it's just an extra stage for me to shine on? I don't feel any pressure of where we are. Um, it would always be the pressure of the fight. Um, the same as every fight's the same. You get them little butterflies, you get them moments of doubt. And I feel like with every fight recently, I'm getting a bit more professional. I'm getting more well-versed of how to handle the adversities before you get in and whilst you're in there. And um, yeah, I'm just ready to do the job. I don't need to sit with telling you how I'm gonna do it and the bravado of what I used to do when I was brand new in the UFC and a lot younger. And um, I've worked so hard, I'm battle tested, and I'm ready to just absolutely tear the roof off the gaff on Saturday. Can lightning strike thrice? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Uh, and to fight fans, we obviously knew who you were, especially from your time in the regional scene in the UK, but you kind of exploded onto the scene with Barstool and your knockouts, The Rock is tweeting at you, Drake's mm -hmm. giving you. I feel like fame just kind of hits you out of nowhere. So how has it been navigating the last few months around the world? It's been absolutely disgusting, to be honest. Um, Post-fight, I'll enjoy an ale. I'll enjoy doing the, um, the media with everyone. And then when you get home, it absolutely kicks you in the face because you're not normal anymore. Um, I can't just walk little Frank and Patsy down the street anymore. I can't just go to football. So what I've had to do is grieve private a private life because my life's not private anymore. So that's been something that not everyone would have to deal with. I don't think um, when we start fighting, I think we start to just win a belt. We don't start for fame. We don't really start for the money. It's about the prestige and the honour of winning that belt. But I'm very fortunate, I suppose, that um, people want to know and I'm that approachable, um, but sometimes it, it weighed heavy, but um, I've just learned how to handle it now. And not, do you know, like me, I never want to not give everyone every bit of time that I've got, and I want to make everyone feel special, but when you've got hundreds of people a day, um, that can drain your energy, so I've just had to learn boundaries, being respectful to the people when they want to speak to me, but if I haven't got time, it's not the end of the world if I say no. That's been the hardest thing, but um, I'm leaning. Did Connor send you a DM about advice on handling fame? Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, she met him, didn't I? And then we'd spoke a few times when I had a bevy in the Black Forge, obviously. And um, I messaged him going, how do, how do you handle this? Because you can blow up and then you can blow up. And um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't quite get my head around how sometimes people are with you. And he was just like, when you're in the gym, it's just the gym. Don't let no one else in, keep everyone outside. Always remember it's just fighting. You're a cage warrior, that's what we are. We're cage warriors champions. And he, he, he said some mad things about Valentina's gonna get a, a max smack and all these kind like, it was, it was so poetic and it was so lovely. Um, but my partner Ellis printed it off um, and put it in a sign in MSG and it's in my front room. So every day, if I'm struggling or if I'm feeling good, but I don't need to get ahead of myself, 
get a big fat head and walk around with ego. It's to stay grounded and to realise that I'm just here to win. And the rest of it, the external factors mean fuck all. Then, uh, unrelated to your fight, I've been asking all the fighters this. Uh, this might be Frankie Edgar's last fight uh, in his MMA career. So, uh, growing up, were you a fan? Did you watch him? Do you have any favorite memories of Frank? Um, yeah, when he fought Maynard, I think it's probably one of everyone's favorite fights. But I just remember he'd fight at all kinds of weights. He wouldn't cut weight. He'd be true to to his weight and his walking around style. And I feel like I do that a little bit sometimes. People go, oh, can you go to straw weight? If you want to see an emaciated Molly McCann who's got no cardio and is blowing from round two, then all right, do you know what I mean? But um, he's done it the hard way. He's he's done extremely well. And um, if this is his last fight, what an arena to bow out on in his home, in front of the fans. And um, yeah, he's a pioneer of the sport and it'd be sad to see him go when we've all got nothing but respect for him. Molly, over here in the middle. Over here. Oh, thanks, lad. <laughs> uh, you were talking about, and you've became this superstar, megastar, especially over in uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. That said, you're on the prelims. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, lad, I'm fighting an MSG. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, pff, lad, I don't care. Um, it means I get to get out early and get on, on the Guinness before my family is what that means. But... Um, yeah, means nothing to me. I mean, are you surprised by it, though? No. Have you seen who's on the card? I, I was surprised. Why? Yeah, I was surprised. Have you seen who's on the card? No, it's loaded. It's loaded. I, oh. I, I got it. I, just, I was surprised. Uh, I, don't, I don't put myself here. I just come to fight and give the fans everything that they've worked hard for. Um, you could put me on first, and I'd still have this smile on my face going to fight at MSG. It might have been a good idea to put you on first, and then they would. And now, and then more time on the Howl Head and Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about your opponent for a second, Erin Blanchfield. One thing I, I watched a recent interview with her, and she said that she's a much better grappler than you, and you've never faced a grappler like her. What do you think about that? I fought Jillian Robertson and I fought Talia Santos, and I think they're both better grapplers than her. I've prepared for her like she's my hardest fight in my life, like I have everyone else, but. If she wants to say that, well, she's never been punched by someone like me who can punch as hard as I can or elbow a fucking face off. Do you know what I mean? So um, I'm going to stay respectful to my opponent. I'm going to give the garden the performance it deserves and the people the performance they deserve. She can come at me with a grappling. She can do whatever she wants. It's MMA, but I'm weathered. I've got more experience than her. I've got more wins than her, and I've got more finishes than her. So... Let's stand seven. Molly, do you think that experience does give you the edge in this fight? How, you know, how do you see yourselves matching up? I try not to preempt how the fight's going to go. I've done that with Talia Santos and it, it didn't work out too well for me. So I get in there and I read, read every movement and every reaction, but the, f the fight starts on the feet. If she wants to shoot in from the other side of the cage, then that's fine. She wants to try and push me to the wall, that's fine. Um, I'm just ready for everywhere that, that it goes. I'm, I've brought in grapplers to train with for this fight camp. I've brought in ex-US judo and uh, wrestling uh, players. And I, Look, I'm calm. I don't know if he's normally seen me this calm. I'm not being too loud. Um, I'm just chilled. A nervous me might have more bravado, might try and sell it all to the cameras that I'm nervous and I'm this, that and the other. Listen, this is more my home than it's going to be his, let me tell you that. And you know, you're, you're riding that momentum from those last two wins. What did you think when they put forward Erin to you? Because I think Miranda Maverick was also calling you out, you know, after, after your win in, in London. What, what did you think about Erin next? I was given a date and a name and I said yes to both. Um, a lot of people have been calling me out, so I must be doing something good, you know. Um, but I'm only looking at what's in front of me. I'm not looking at what's behind me. I'm only fighting the people the UFC give me to fight. So if they wanted me to fight Miranda, I'd fight Miranda. If they wanted me to fight Antonina Shevchenko, I'd have fought her. Um, Erin's the perfect... Do you know, if I knock Erin out and, or, or submit her, then the, the, the media would still say in the next fight if I fought a grappler, oh, but she's got grappling. So did Hannah Goldie. 
So did Luana. She, she was a Thai boxer, should have been able to clinch and, and leave me head off, but here I am still. Um, I'm not too confident or overzealous in the fact that I've won two, three fights, three big wins, and like that's what's going to get me the win uh, on Saturday. The hard work is what's going to get me the win. And um, I won't be having a big ego like she has, and I won't be coming in. I'll just let me fists, me knees, me takedowns, and me anti grappling do the talking. Molly, don't and, back you. Sorry, 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 I just sorry. had one more. <laughs> um, your last fight, uh, your last three fights, obviously, you were fighting alongside Paddy. You know, you were both going into fight week together. What's it like not having him with you? It's a lucky thing. I've had 14 fights without him and still won, isn't it? Um, look, he's on the phone every day, the same as every other training partner that I've got in that gym. Um, we've got six lads fighting on Cage Warriors. Um, on Saturday in Manchester, so he's um, he's coaching there. He's devastated not to be here, but it kind of gives us a chance to be our own person and, and not Siamese twins. Um, he's missed. I, I do miss walking around the hotel and not getting like people trying to tackle us or um, arguments kicking off everywhere to keep the fight week entertaining. But um, yeah, I'll see him on Tuesday anyway. Has he given you any any advice going into this one? Do you know, um, in this camp, he's coached a lot um, when we've been sparring. He's really, through when I've brought people in to spar me, he's tried to coach them on how to beat me in rounds in a, in a, a positive way. Um, and it wasn't happening, so I was buzzing with that. Um, he's like me, me little big brother, isn't he? And um, I can't wait to do him proud and, and just prove that I'm not riding on the back of someone else. This is coattails also. I'm, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. Thank you. Molly, down the back here. Um, I was just I was walking over here uh, through Times Square and I saw a big uh, big billboard with, you know... With my face on yeah, it? With, yeah, with... And I was uh, seeing it, lads. How heavy is that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's definitely, you know, a special thing, you know, coming from where you come from. Did you ever imagine right in Times Square there'd be a big billboard with, with your face on there? Do you know, when I was a little kid and I used to box, I used to remember running along the docks in Liverpool. And do you know, when your mind it starts going to places you like and imagining all these amazing scenarios. I always thought one day this would be my my thing, do you know what I mean? In my wildest dreams, this is what I imagined. And being here, it's so surreal, it's like proper pinch me moments, but within the same breath, it's like I really know this is where, where I'm supposed to be at the right time in my career and in my life. What was it like? Uh, like were, did you envision this? Like, particularly when you're at the Katie Taylor fight, right? You look at that, and you, you must have been thinking all all night that night. This is going to be me in a few months. Listen, I was off thinking about giving up MMA and doing boxing. I was like, Eddie, Eddie, please let me fight here. Please let me fight here. When I was talking to Eddie Hearn, but um, no, the UFC and MMA is where I wanted it to be. And I did say, I got a picture outside Madison Square Garden that night, and. Um, and I said to my partner, Ellis, I was like, next time we come here, I'm going to be fighting. And she said, I know who you are, and, and here we are, so. I wanted to ask her one, and if you want to hit me with a no comment on this, you, you certainly can, but uh, back at home in, in the UK, there was some controversy with your doctor, Usman Sajad. I know that Tyson Fury came out in, in defense of him. Conor Benn has, has defended him, but do you want to sort of talk about your, your relationship with, with Dr. Usman? and is he working with you for this fight? He's never worked with me before. Believe right. it or not, being a gay woman, I still have to have a pregnancy test. He gave me a pregnancy test. He took my bloods and sent them off to be tested. Um, shock, I'm, I wasn't pregnant. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, he, if you have a look, any, any big fighter who he's ever met, he's, he's put on his Instagram or his website. It's, I've, I've had one conversation with the guy, and that's it. So, I... I don't need, know if I need to defend that or defend him. I don't know him. I've just, he's a GP who's dealt with every boxer and um, MMA artist in the northwest of England. So make sure you ask everyone else that question, lad. 100%, 100% I will. Thank you for your time. No problem. Hey, Mo Molly over here. Uh, you know, obviously last fight, you know, Drake dropped a nice milli on you. I'm kind of curious if, if you've heard anything from him. And obviously the price tag's a little bit better this time for him as well. Um, I was messaging him the other day. Um, I sent him a message asking him if I could be in the new season of Top Boy. I'm not sure if anyone's seen that, but there's a few scousers in it, so I thought I'll oh, try my luck. Um, but no, um, I haven't been on social media for this camp. 
yeah, I've stayed away from it to be focused for, for what's coming um, on Saturday night. But I do see he's playing on Friday night in, in, in somewhere in New York. So it wouldn't surprise me if he was coming and going to put a, a parlay on me and Izzy or something like that. See if we can keep the Drake case go, it not going. Perfect. L last question for you here. Uh, obviously, two weeks uh, until the World Cup. Is football coming home or what? I'm not bothered about that, lad. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not feeling the Qatar vibes and all the human rights that haven't gone down. The I'm, I won't even be watching it. Hello, me, Paul Marley. Hello, hey, lad. Make, make it a good one. Man. Make What's it saying? a good one. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Make it a good one. You're my oh, last I got a question. Goal for you. So I know me, Paul Marley likes to party. Where are we partying after the fight? And also, I know you like to bring the animals out when you fight. Drake <laughs> might be coming. Are we going to see Dave Portnoy? Or are we going to see Paddy? Um, Paddy's coaching in Manchester. Dave Portnoy will be there. Probably, Drake will probably come. There's an Irish bar off 34th is where I'll be going for my Guinness and Jameson's after the fight. And um, was there anything else? No, that was it. Just where we partying. Oh, there we go, lad. I'll put it on my Insta. This, that was the best question. What are we doing here? <laughs> Getting drunk. Thank you. Thanks, Kang.